Hello there! And welcome back to another video! This week I'm going to be doing a trial sort of thing, a first impressions kind of thing. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I had a comment asking me about doing digital art on a budget and I've basically, well my version of digital art on a budget might be a little bit illegal uh, and I've kind of gone past that because I get the um, Adobe Creative Cloud uh, with my school tuition so I haven't really used anything that was either free or gotten for free when it shouldn't have been gotten for free uh, since like three years ago and I wouldn't really recommend, you know, getting stuff for free that shouldn't be for free if you don't really have to. So I had the idea of trying to download and use Photoshop CS2 because technically speaking, uh, apparently like the servers that they used to have to uh, verify whether you had a license key, so meaning whether you had like a purchased version of Photoshop CS2, the servers that Adobe had about that uh, kind of haven't been working in the last several years, years. so technically Photoshop CS2 is free and because I'm I've always used, uh, I started off with Photoshop Elements and then I used Photoshop CS4 for a really long time and I'm using Photoshop CC Creative Cloud, currently the 2020 version, but since I've always used Photoshop I figured oh if there's a free version of Photoshop I, I would probably recommend that, but I wasn't really able to find that version of Photoshop in a way that I could like install on my computer like I found a website that had it and had a license key and everything was looking uh, brilliant for me to get downloading and working on that to you know record a video of trying to make it work and like you know offer it as a solution for uh, doing digital art on a budget but it wasn't able to install uh, I kept getting errors and errors and errors and when I tried to install it onto my computer so I didn't even get the opportunity to test if the license key thing worked so because Photoshop CS2 if you don't know came out in 2004 which is a really long time ago exactly a really long time ago so then I like I've been spewing off about uh, drawing apps that are for free, I know GIMP is free and this app called Krita is free and I had tried using GIMP uh, way back in like 2010, 2009 maybe uh, just because I had a friend in high school that also used GIMP and I just really didn't have the best time with it I don't, like I remember having a lot of struggles and I know that they're out with a GIMP too uh, but I figured might as well, if I'm going to be trying a free drawing up, might as well try something that I have zero experience with. So I decided to download Krita, and uh, luckily Krita has a, a Mac version, because I only have Mac computers to work with. So I downloaded Krita, no problems, just go to the Krita website, and then it has like the download link and you install it, no problem. It's completely free, free of charge. If you want to donate something to them uh, to help uh, pay their developers and stuff like that, you can, but their goal is to make a free drawing app for uh, people try to get into digital art when they don't really know if it's for them so yeah this is my first ever and like I didn't even try to like I opened this document and that's the first time I opened any document what you're seeing on the screen is my first ever attempt with Krita 100% not like faking it or anything and my first impression is like it's actually really good like I was able to produce a drawing that I'm fairly happy with having no other experience with this drawing app uh, using the same tablet I had no problems getting my tablet to like get the pressure sensitivity to work to like sync up like my tablet drivers have been installed and I didn't have to change any settings or anything uh, on my computer or anything just like it just worked <laughs> I opened it made a new document and it just worked and the thing that I did have a little bit of trouble with is just that um, I'm really used to Photoshop. Like I've been living in Photoshop for over 10 years now. So a lot of the, the shortcut command keys and things like that, I've been so like, they're so ingrained in my muscle memory that it's just like really hard to break a habit sort of thing. Like if you're always walking, um, a certain way from I don't know like you know you know you you might be able to navigate your bedroom with your eyes closed because uh, you you're so familiar with the bedroom sort of thing like I can describe how to do something in Photoshop uh, which menus what they're called what this that what to correct press in the right order because um, I have uh, friends in my college program that aren't as experienced with Photoshop as I am and I can even if I'm out and about I can just describe from memory like I have Photoshop's entire navigation system ingrained in my memory I'm so used to it so that causes a problem when I'm trying to use another program because say for example uh, one of the big things that I noticed about Krita is that the eraser is like a toggle to sort of thing like any single tool that you have that can put something on the canvas if you hit your 
E key on the keyboard, it toggles it into an eraser. So the eraser isn't its own separate tool. So for me, that was a little bit of uh, different because in Photoshop, your eraser is a separate tool. And I enjoy that because I have my brush uh, like a little bit transparent and really small, but then I have my eraser not transparent at all, really large, so it erases completely sort of thing. And here I had to get used to uh, my eraser acting exactly as my brush. And when I was doing the inking, it was like no problem because um, my default eraser in Photoshop would be like this ink pen, but my sketching pen is more like a pencil. So then it would take like three or four passes over what I want to erase, actually erase it. So, and it's also toggleable for like your uh, bucket fill tool and the gradient tool and all those sorts of things. So sometimes I would forget to untoggle my eraser and I would switch to another tool. I'm like, why isn't this drawing? Oh, it's on the eraser setting. That's interesting. Uh, that sort of thing. So that was like the biggest kind of difference I would say between Krita and Photoshop of course there's other things like uh, when you make a selection to let go of the selection in Photoshop you go command D for command D select while in Krita it's command shift A and I actually didn't really spend enough time in Krita to figure out if I can change the hotkeys and I feel like if I did change the hotkeys the eraser thing would still be an eraser thing but the hotkey situation I would like be able to use uh, Krita with almost no problem whatsoever. A lot of the shortcuts were the same though. To switch back to the brush, it was brush. To change the brush size, it was the uh, bracket keys and that kind of thing. So it was like really useful. Another thing that Krita does that Photoshop doesn't is that they have uh, the triangle based color picker, not the square based color picker, which is fine. Uh, another thing is when you're painting and you have your brush selected in Photoshop, if you hold the option or alt key, on a Windows computer, it switches to your eyedropper, so you click on your different color, and then when you let go of the optional key, you're back at your brush. In Krita, it's the command or control key, not the option slash alt key. So it's just little differences like that that I've noticed just because, again, I'm so used to how Photoshop works. But if you were to use Krita without having like a lot of preconceived notions, or if you weren't like really used to some other digital drawing program, like I feel like you would be able to like do so much with Krita and it would not cause you any problems whatsoever. Like I, it, there, there weren't any times where I felt like it was laggy. There weren't any times where I, it just did random things that I didn't really expect. Like I could always figure out, okay, I pressed the key that I shouldn't have pressed, but that's because in Photoshop, okay, that that key is like, it does this thing. Uh, the tools, you, every single tool that I would have like wanted to have, like maybe it was a little bit more hidden away. Like if you go back to when I was uh, sketching well, just finished sketching Izuku and uh, before I did the line art, I did a transform thing that kind of moved his face a bit lower down. So that was, what I would call like a warp transform or closer to liquify because you could make more points. So in Photoshop, that's in the filter liquify or transform and you do like a right click and then instead of a free transform or whatever, you go warp. And here you kind of had to go to your properties menu and change it. Then you could customize how many little points you wanted to be editable. But it, just a quick Google search taught me that that existed in Krita. And I was able to find it and I was able to do exactly what I wanted. And that's just kind of amazing, especially because I have been over the past year, uh, using my iPad Pro to draw and I did get uh, Procreate and I got Art Studio Pro and I've had a lot of issues on and off with Procreate and Art Studio Pro. Art Studio Pro less so, but with Procreate quite a lot of them where I was just not able to do what I wanted it to do because the options were so different or so hidden away and it was like a very huge interruption to my drawing process. And I wouldn't say that this was like a seamless process with Krita, but I will say that I struggled a lot less to get what I wanted to happen than I do in Procreate or Art Studio Pro. And that is sort of probably because I have the keyboard completely accessible and it's still like when I connect my keyboard to my iPad, I really have no comfortable way to have the, the iPad placed how I wanted to draw comfortably with a keyboard also placed comfortably because I don't have a stand for the iPad to like have it propped up or whatever. And anyway, it's just, I found Krita a lot easier than uh, using like iPad drawing apps actually just because of all these reasons like it's the keyboard even though the shortcuts are different it was like very easy to adapt my mindset the, the one thing is like a lot of the times when I was trying to do it deselect instead of pressing command shift a I would press command shift s which is save as so it would bring up a menu and I'm like oh why is this here but 
yeah besides that it was really good and then the brush settings i didn't really mess around with the like nitty gritty of the brush settings i really just uh, experimented with a bunch of the presets but the presets are really good there's this one inking brush that the icon is like a yellow dip pen that works so nicely i really like it and the painting brushes some of them are kind of like weirdly textured or they have like this kind of blending mode kind of thing but i found one that had a little bit of texture but then some transparency and it was just like the one i'm using right now actually that i just, it just did everything i would have wanted it to do for that kind of uh, blending thing and then i use the ink brush later on when i'm uh, doing the shading on izuku i use the same ink brush that i used to do the line art to uh, do some cell shading because i wanted to see if i could do both um cell shading and um painterly type shading and um, there I was just trying to figure out a way to make the hand a little bit less saturated and I was trying to look for like an adjustment layer for saturation just to like see if I could find it but then I couldn't really find exactly what I wanted but then I did command U which is what brings up the saturation uh, lightness and saturation lightness and hue control slider thing in photoshop and it brought up the exact same slider thing in Krita so I'm like all right that works and so I just like de desaturated it a little bit and that kind of thing and here I am getting into the the cell shading experiment uh also I was poking around a bit later on like at the end of the hair shading I was poking around to try to see if there were uh layer modes because on top of the layers i don't know if you can see it says normal so in photoshop you have uh these like a bunch of different presets like color dodge multiply uh overlay all those kinds of things that do different effects like the layer that you're changing the effect on will have different um effects on what's underneath and stuff like that and it also has a lot of the ones that are more common it doesn't have as many as photoshop but it does have like here i am messing around with them it has all the basics, like it has multiply, it has overlay, it has color dodge, and those are the ones I use the most anyway. Anything else is just kind of like a little bit like, you know, <laughs> being extra in the digital uh, program. But honestly, yeah, I would really, really recommend Krita if you want a free drawing app for your computer. There's a Windows version, there's a Mac version, I think there's a Linux version, but like who uses Linux anyway? Uh, the default brushes are all really comprehensive. It's designed to do digital art. And while I don't think I'm going to fully switch to Krita, because again, years and years and years and years of getting used to Photoshop, I wouldn't really, like I, I wouldn't see myself switching. But if for one reason or another, I lose access to Photoshop and I can't afford to get it back or I can't like cheat my way into getting it back illegally, then yeah, in that case, Krita is definitely an option I would consider for doing digital art. So like, yeah, and it's free. Like I really can't believe that this, this app that works so well is free and I like this just like they're so like there I am trying to like uh, customize my windows to make my layer thing a bit larger and stuff like that and even uh, one thing that Krita has that I'm really glad it has because I've gotten to the point where I can't really work in my usual flow without this is uh, locking transparency so in the layers towards the far right there's a little like checkerboard pattern that when you click it it means that you can't draw outside of where you've already painted and we're coming up near the end of this illustration i'm just like messing around with a bunch of the different weird brushes that i didn't get to mess around with before to like do a little background thing but yeah honestly if you want a free drawing app for your computer you have a tablet just get Krita. it's free it does everything that you would want it to do it's fairly intuitive you might have to like if you're not used to or you haven't used a drawing program in the past you might have to look some stuff up but like I'm sure that anything that you want to learn how to do in Krita, there's something out there that will tell you where it is. So yeah, Krita has my seal of approval. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, the, the character that I drew is Izuku from My Hero Academia. But yeah, that's everything. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next week.